Honorable, we want you just to respond to this assertions by by John Sango, that President Obo was sworn in in the country when the High Court this when the High Court declared valid after the presidential petition. Maybe just your response from that as an expert in law. Yes, I think um, we have heard several sentiments um, uh, by State Council John Sangwa, who has been misleading the public about uh, issues of um, the presidential eligibility and matters of the Constitution. We are fully aware ourselves as PF and as a legal profession that Mr. John Sangwa, State Council, is one of those lawyers that was representing Haka in the 2016 petition and we are also aware that is one of the lawyers that misled HH on the number of the 14 days. And he's the lawyer that lost the election petition when it was thrown out by the con court because it was presented uh, to court, but they failed to finish it on time. So State Council John Sangwa was also the lawyer in the Danipule case. He was representing you know, the Law Association of Zambia. And the con court has clearly defined its uh, decisions on both matters. So we are wondering why uh, State Council John Sangwa would today come and start saying matters that are water under the bridge. Who in this country or in this world can say uh, Dr. Edgar Chagwarungu is not president of Zambia? Who can listen to John Sangwa when he says that? First of all, on the issue of the petition uh, that was dismissed, when a petition is dismissed, do you expect the court to make a decision or a judgment on a matter that they've thrown out? So for him to say the con court did not decide, that they did not declare President Lungu eligible, there is no law that uh, authorizes the con court to pass a decision on a matter that they've thrown out. So John Sangwa is misleading the public and is actually um, being treacherous. Having lost the Corn Court case in 2016, September, when the court threw it out, he should have actually found another way of coming back to this issue. Today, as we speak, State Council John Sangwa is ranting on almost each and every case. He's actually picking up any topic and going to the public and saying, this is what the Constitution says. John Sangwa lost almost seven cases from the time the 2016 constitution came in place. And uh, me, I know him as my former lecturer and as my former boss. I know that he has never won a case. So this is a man who will go around telling people he's a constitutional expert, but why doesn't he win constitutional law cases? Just recently we had the Bizuay Unkunika case where the court was deciding on the grade 12 certificate. I handled that matter myself. And um, the case, the presented arguments before the court went in our favor. You know, and now it's clear as to what constitutes a grade 12 certificate. So, can we again go back to the same court and say the court has not ruled on the grade 12 certificate? I've heard him telling people that uh, as far as he's concerned, the court should have nullified the seat for the Rundazi Central. But look, the law is very clear. If John Sangwa has a copy of the Constitution, he will be able to see that uh, the constitution has a 90-day period within which an election petition can be presented. The Bizuayo Ngunika case was presented to court after two years. The elections were in August 2016. The matter went to court in 2018, almost 2019, early 2019. So how can the court nullify a seat when the constitution says the court has no power to hear an election petition outside the 90 day period. You know, I've also heard him saying, no, the president has violated the constitution several times. First of all, the, he was not sworn in by the chief justice. All those arguments John Sangwa is presenting uh, below the standard of a legal argument. Because if you look at um, the manner in which John Sangwa has been trying to mislead the public, it's very clear that um, he has always wanted to come up with an argument that people would actually be swayed with. For instance, when John Sangwa woke up and, and he started uh, saying he's going to petition the president's nomination, you know, 
Uh, we want to find out from him when the court has ruled because the court has ruled on the presidential eligibility and there's a judgment which is binding it's that judgment is perpetual it's binding it's futuristic and no one will change it unless the court itself now when john sangwa says that when the president presents his petition uh, sorry his nominations our petition saying that he's not eligible the question is simple. What was the decision in the Danipuri case? Where John Sangwa presented all those arguments, including the fact that the president was not eligible. John Sangwa presented those arguments and lost before the court. So when he goes to court and says the president is not eligible, the question that will be put to him is, did the president save three years between 2015 and 2016? The answer is no. What constitutes a presidential term? They've already defined all those things. So we are waiting for him. The moment he presents a petition to court, we will also present the judgment and say, this case was closed. This matter of saying whether the president is eligible or not was already closed by the con court. His other argument, which is also a very shallow argument and a basic argument, a premature argument, is that the judgment did not mention President Lumi. How was he expecting the judgment to mention President Lungu when the judgment, when, when the constitution does not mention President Lungu? When the 2016 constitution was signed, it, you can read it either way, back to front to front, front to back. The constitution does not contain Edgar Lungu or President Edgar Lungu. Why? Because the constitution was not meant for the president. It was made for the people of Zambia. And that is why it uses words like the person elected, okay, it could be tomorrow President Lungu not be in state house. Do we need to change the constitution? Where does John Sangwa see a constitution carrying people's names? So we want to rubbish all his claims and just urge the people to ignore him because we feel uh, time has come for us to put him where he belongs. For instance, he's been telling people that the president would have committed treason if he presented the nomination to the ECZ. Does John Sangwa understand the offense of treason? If you read section 43 of the penal code, treason is known. It's an offense where somebody wants to take over power using unconstitutional means. Now, what is the role of the Electoral Commission of Zambia? The role of the Electoral Commission of Zambia is to conduct elections. So, the nomination process is the beginning of elections because then only those validly nominated will be allowed to stand. So when John Sangwa says, if the president presents a petition, a nomination, I will say he has committed treason. All those arguments are not supported by any legal provisions. They are not supported by any law. And I also know that 90% um, of the time, John Sangwa fails to point to the supporting law. He just makes blanket statements. He will never point at the law that is actually supporting his argument. So we want to aid the people of Zambia, forget about John Sangwa. He is nobody. John Sangwa is nobody. He is not the only Zambian lawyer. He is not the only person who knows the law. All the arguments John Sangwa has presented before the courts were thrown out. You remember that when John Sangwa, when, when he misread the church on the 14-day period, and they said that uh, uh, the matter had actually come to an end because they could not finish it on time. The same John Sangwa went to the High Court, Osaka High Court, presented the petition and said that he wanted the High Court to instruct the Con Court to hear the petition. The High Court threw out that case because electoral matters, we all know, the power to handle electoral cases lies with the Constitutional Court. So they told him, the High Court has no power to hear you, John Sangwa, and we will not waste our time. So all the argue, all the cases he lost in court, he has now started coming back to, to the public, presenting totally different views. So we want to advise the public to seriously ignore him, because as far as we are concerned, John Sangwa is a nobody. This country does not belong to him. He's just one of us. He cannot stand up and say, this one must be president, this one must not be president. It's the people that decide who goes to state house. And the hatred, the hatred and the levels of hatred that John Sangwa is exhibiting towards the head of state actually shows that 
everything he's trying to say is saying it out of vengeance. Having failed to win Hakainde's case, and he's also conflicted because he has been representing the UPND and the church. So why don't we get a neutral person to tell us about the presidential eligibility? Because John Sangwa is not neutral. He is not neutral and he will never tell the truth on this matter. And for all we care, once the courts have decided the matter and closed it, it's dead and buried. No one can reopen it and no one can overturn the judgments of the court. And that's why John Sangwa is busy committing contempt of court day in, day out. Of the five cases he presented to court against the president, he has never won any of those cases. So how does he come up today and such raising the same cases he lost in court? He's busy telling people wrong things. He must learn to respect court decisions. And this is the same John Sangwa that, 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 um, that was telling uh, the judges of the con court that they don't know the law because they are incompetent and ill qualified. He presented these cases before different cases with different courts, but he has simply lost. So the problem is not with the courts, it's with John Sangwa. So we want to advise John Sangwa, please take your seat and do not mislead the public because the people of Zambia are aware. Come 2021, August, we are going for elections, the president will win again. John Sangwa again will petition and he will lose again because he's the only one who lives in in a world that nobody understands. So we are grateful uh, for, for this opportunity to just respond to some of the arguments that he presented. And also we are grateful to the people that are following this argument. And maybe as we wind up, let me also address the issue of the grade 12 certificate. I have heard him mentioning the great issue of the grade 12 certificate, a case which I handled personally. And he was telling people the court was wrong. They should have nullified the seat. They should have done this and that. They should have gone this and this, that way. I think it's very clear. If you look at the judgment itself and the arguments that were before the court, the Examination Council of Zambia regulations on this grade 12 certificate came into effect in 2018. By that time, by 2018, there was no such regulation to control the type of grade 12 certificates. The Zambia Qualifications Authority, uh, you know, uh, descriptors, level descriptors, which are used now in Zambia to see what is your level of your qualification if you come from outside the country. Those regulations only came into effect in July, you know, of 2017. Sorry, July of 2016. After the candidates had already done their nomination. So, by law, John Sangwa cannot talk about the concord going below or before the law. Because there was no, the, the law was there, but there were no regulations. So, the issue of the grade 12 certificate as being debated by the members of the public must be understood that the issue of grade 12 certificate has always been there. It's not a new law. People have always been getting grade 12 certificates and school certificates. What is there now is just complying with what the 2016 constitution said. And the 2016 constitution requires that a person should have a grade 12 certificate. So what the con court did in the Bizoya Ngonika case, we presented our arguments in that case and the court said, for purposes of elections, a grade 12 certificate should be a school certificate or a GCE that is equivalent to a school certificate. And the court threw out all the other arguments put up by the other lawyers, where they were saying, look, uh, all this tertiary education and so on do not qualify. So the court has helped us in that matter by defining what an equivalent is. So according to the Bizoya Ngunika case, the Lundazi Central seat, the court is saying, for it to be equivalent, it should not be more than a grade 12 meaning diplomas, degrees, are not equivalent of a grade 12 certificate. All these certificates and all the other qualifications which don't meet the grade 12 certificate do not also qualify. Meaning, even if you have a PhD or a master's, when you are going to stand in an election, what they'll be looking for are your qualifications at grade 12. If you are going to University of Zambia, 
they may look at your other qualifications. But if you are going to stand as, a, as an MP, they must, they must first look at what qualifications you have at grade 12. And that is why we are saying, John Sangwa was not in court in this matter. He doesn't know the arguments that were presented, but he's busy misleading the public. How was the court going to nullify the seat when there was no such petition? The petition before the court was that the Honorable Member of Parliament breached the Constitution because he did not have the requisite to approve certificate. But in John Sangwa's own thinking, he says the court should have nullified the seat. How can the court nullify a seat when the argument is different? When you ask for an apple and you are given a different fruit, how can you say I'm eating an apple when you've been given something else? So I just thought I could add uh, one line on the issue of the grade 12 certificate and say that this is not a new law. The Examination Council of Zambia has been in existence for a very long time. The 2016 constitution has been in existence for five years now, more than five years, having come into effect on the second day, on the fifth day of January 2016. So as we speak, all we are expecting, all people who want to stand as members of parliament is to present, you know, their grade 12 certificates as in school certificate or to present before the Examination Council of Zambia or Electoral Commission of Zambia qualifications that will meet the five O-level subjects and not as John Sang was understood. So I just thought I could add one line to that issue and uh, also wish to thank the people of Zambia for supporting the law because I think we all know that parliament must have people capable of debating national issues and that was the basis. The recommendation on the grade 12 certificate came from the people who are doing the constitutional review commission and they said they wanted to raise the level, you know, to jump from ordinary citizens to at least school leavers. In other countries, to become a member of parliament, you must have a master's or a PhD. In Zambia, we are okay. We are talking about basic, the 12 certificate, because we've got secondary schools in every constituency of this country. So we cannot fail to have, uh, you know, the 12 uh, school leavers. The only issue we want to urge the ECZ is to ensure that the way they apply this law must be uniform. They must apply it in uniform manner, without without dilly dallying or without allowing their people to accept wrong qualifications. Once they come up with a uniform standard, the people of Zambia will be very grateful.